Throughout history, there have been many rulers who have struck fear into the hearts of those that got in their way. Rulers who were both loved and feared for what they could do depending upon their mood. Genghis Khan was one of these rulers, known for being ruthless and unforgiving to any who opposed him. And in case you won't take our word for it, here are 10 reasons Genghis Khan was both feared as well as loved by many. Stay tuned to number one to find out what could be the most mysterious burial in the history of the world. Number 10. The Birth of Genghis Khan Born way back in 1162, there's not a ton of information surrounding his birth. What there is, however, is a legend surrounding his birth that might have been a foretelling of who he would later become. For starters, he was not named Genghis Khan from birth, but rather Timojin. The legend of Khan's birth refers to a blood clot that the newborn held in his hand as he exited the womb. This clot was around the size of a knuckle bone, and according to Mongolian mythology, it was said to be a warning that there would be bloodshed in the child's future in the form of a massacre or even a war. In this case, at least, it was true in both aspects, as he ended up being one of the all-time most fearsome leaders in the world. Number 9. Appearance Strangely enough, for a man as popular and as infamous as Genghis Khan, there is very little known about his appearance. In fact, there aren't even any portraits of him that survive to give us any idea. Now, you may think at this point you have seen pictures of him in paintings before, so how is this possible? Well, the fact is that those were all painted or drawn sometime after his death and were mostly based on facts or rumors that were passed down. The only relatively solid information on him is that he was tall and strong, but that's a pretty vague description, and it doesn't tell any details such as hair color or length or anything of that sort. That is, unless you trust the word of a man who had never seen him before. The only known description comes from a 14th century historian named Rashid al-Din, who described Khan with red hair and green eyes. And strange as it may sound considering his Asian heritage, it is not unheard of in the Mongols. So whether you choose to believe that he was indeed a ginger or not, we will leave that up to you to decide. Number 8. Tough Childhood Here's a backstory that will make anybody feel like they actually have it pretty good. His father was poisoned and killed when he was just 9 years old, followed by his family being expelled from the tribe, leaving his mother to raise 7 children on her own. He grew up foraging for food just to survive, with stories of him even killing his own stepbrother at the age of 10 while they were fighting over food. When he was just a teenager, he and his new wife were abducted and kept as slaves before the two of them managed to escape by befriending one of their captors. Despite all of this, by the time he was in his early 20s, he had already built a reputation as a formidable warrior and leader and had begun to assemble his army and started gaining followers. Before we move on, don't forget to click that subscribe button below to check out our future videos. Number 7. Genghis Khan Eco Warrior Genghis Khan's name is not typically synonymous with caring for the environment, especially since he murdered, assaulted, and plundered. Ironically enough though, by doing this, he unwittingly helped to preserve our world and the atmosphere. According to a study carried out by the Carnegie Institution's Department of Global Energy, his warpath and the 40 million people he's known to have killed during the time of his reign actually helped the planet. I mean, it's a bit morbid, but they found that wiping out entire civilizations reduced the amount of harmful gases that were being exposed to the atmosphere, cooling it down and contributing towards the prevention of climate change, a few hundred years before climate change even became a real topic. Concluding that, in the end, he prevented a modern equivalent of a full year's worth of carbon dioxide, almost 800 million tons of the stuff from entering the Earth's atmosphere. While this technically makes him the world's first ever eco-warrior, it was unfortunately by becoming the human embodiment of evil. Number 6. Often Outnumbered You may be surprised to hear that, despite his unbelievable success in war, Genghis Khan was often harshly outnumbered in battle. This was especially true when he fought some of his most legendary European battles. 
The thing is though, that what he lacked in physical soldiers, he more than made up for in horses, actually having far more horses than soldiers. And these weren't just any horses either, they were Mongol horses, smaller and more agile than the typical horse that was used by the Europeans. These horses also had far more stamina than most and were known to travel up to 600 miles in just 9 days. You may wonder how exactly this helped him win wars, and the answer to this is genius. Genghis Khan would stuff dummies, put them on the horse's back, then attach bushes to the horse's tail that made far more dust than they should, creating the illusion to the enemy that there was a massive army charging them. This tactic was also used mostly for the secondary attack on an enemy force that was already weakened from battle, so when they saw a seemingly huge army heading straight for them, they often surrendered or retreated. Number 5. Biochemical Warfare we would be forgiven to think that biochemical warfare is a relatively new principle, with some of the earliest uses thought to date back to the First and Second World War. However, Genghis Khan is also well documented in using biochemical warfare. Now, he didn't just airdrop a virus on the heads of his enemies, well, actually he kind of did. Khan used the ancient version of a missile, a catapult, to launch an ancient version of a rabies bomb. Dead people behind the walls of his enemies. And they weren't just any dead people, but they were in fact people and animals that had died of the plague. This plague, known at the time as the Black Death, is what we now believe could have been the bubonic plague. This method was said to have first been used when Genghis Khan tried to take the city of Kaffa. His hopes were that by throwing the dead bodies of plague victims over the walls, he would either infect the town or that the residents and army would not be able to stand the smell and would leave the city. Number 4. Married Daughters to Ruling Families If there is one thing you already knew about Genghis Khan before this video, it's probably that apart from his insane brutality, he assaulted thousands of women. That's thousands, with three zeros, in case you missed it. With that many offspring, he had a sizable amount of daughters whom he could then marry off to the king of one of his allied nations. What you probably didn't know though, is that he would then send his new son-in-law off to war, leaving his daughter in a powerful position that he would use to his own advantage. Most times the son-in-law would die in battle, leaving his very own daughter as the sole ruler of the cities. This would in turn help him expand his allied reach and help him build a nation that was essentially under his control. It also assisted in him expanding the Mongol nation from a small tribe into a global empire with little concern of loyalty. Number 3. Modern Descendants As we mentioned just now, Genghis Khan was disgustingly vile when it came to the treatment of women, among other things. And according to records from the time, anytime his army took a new city, they would collect all the remaining women from the town or village and present them to their leader, who would then choose only the most beautiful women of the bunch to take to his tent. Through these methods, and the fact that he also had multiple wives, it makes sense that he possibly created hundreds of illegitimate children, aside from the recognized children that stayed with his army. Then you need to consider that his children having children, and their children having children, for 750 more years, what you end up with is around 16 million people alive today that are his direct descendants. To put that in different terms, 0.5% of all men on earth contain the Y chromosome that is associated with Genghis Khan. To put that into even more perspective, around 1 in just 200 people could be his direct descendant, and if you currently live in the former Mongol Empire, those odds increase to around 8%. So why not get together and have dinner while you reminisce over your great 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 grandfather? Just make sure you book enough seats. Number 2. Soviet's Removal from History Despite what you might think about Genghis Khan, these days he is regarded as a Mongolian national hero and is credited as one of the founding fathers of the nation. The trouble is, this was not always the case, and under the Soviet rule during the 20th century, even the mention of his name was banned, and people were forbidden from visiting his birthplace. His life story and accomplishments were even removed from the school's textbooks to try to get his story and Mongolian heritage removed from history. Luckily, in the early 1990s, Mongolia won independence and he was once again rewritten into Mongolian history. Number 1. Death and Burial 
Much like most of the details surrounding his more personal life, there is a lot of mystery still surrounding his death. Starting with his actual death, the stories of this are largely disputed by many historians. The most common cause is that he died from injuries sustained while he fell off his horse one day. But there are multiple other sources stating other causes, such as malaria or an arrow wound to his knee. There are even some sources that say he was murdered when he tried to force himself onto a Chinese princess. Whatever you decide is the most likely cause of death, that only solves half of the problem, because his burial spot is also shrouded in mystery. And according to legend, anybody that the funeral party came across was murdered on the spot in order to ensure that nobody saw the exact location. The legend also states that after burying him, the people present repeatedly rode their horses over his grave to conceal it from sight. And then, as a final measure, in case that wasn't enough, they diverted a nearby river to flow over his grave in order to ensure that nobody could find its location. Oh, and of course, all the soldiers that were present at the funeral were later killed in order to further ensure his final resting place would remain even today a mystery. Let us know your thoughts on Genghis Khan in the comments below and be good out there.